morning. First off, thank you guys for coming out again today. Obviously, uh, reflecting uh, back, getting a win at Navy in Annapolis. Uh, great team win. Really proud of the way our guys responded and the way they were able to go out there and perform on a Saturday against a tough place to play. We always know that uh, playing the cadets is no easy task, and uh, I think our guys did a lot of good things. You always talk about the improvements from week one to week two, and um, you know we were able to see that, right? We were able to make cleaner tackles, obviously, versus the triple option, which obviously was very important to be assignment sound. Offensively, we were able to be a little bit more explosive, obviously something that uh, we've harped on. And we just got to kind of continue to find consistency. Special teams, too many mistakes. We got to continue to fix those problems. Um, but all in all, I like the direction. A direct 100% focus on Arkansas State. Excited to be able to come home and play a home game uh, in our great stadium with our great fans. And, and can't wait. But our, our guys are, are focused on the, the task at hand and, and ready for Saturday. Brian, after two games, is it, is it difficult to figure out an identity yet just because of how, how varied those two teams were? Is it, or is it kind of like you saw enough progress where you think this is kind of where we can build on a little bit? Well, I think every week you're building upon it. And like I've always said, right, we already knew that those first two games were going to be drastically different offenses that we'd be approaching. And, you know, sometimes we always say, well, man, is the passing game working now? Because all of a sudden, well, they took away the run game. So it's you're all, every week you're trying to build upon what you did from the previous weeks not just week, right? And so um, the identity, we always know what we want to be, right? We've got to be able to stop the explosives. We've got to be able to tackle well, right? We've got to be able to play fundamentally sound on special teams. And then as an offense, just find that consistent basis. And so that's going to be our identity going through. Now, if Arkansas State plays a, a three-man box, well, you guys are going to say after the game, great job. It looks like you found the running game. Um, and so we're constantly working on that, and we'll see what it unfolds. Obviously, they've got a good team. Uh, there's a reason they're able to do what they do. You know, if you look at Arkansas State, they have a quarterback that's played over 32 games, and he's had a lot of success doing so. Uh, they're one of only uh, three teams in the entire country that doesn't have a turnover already in this season. And uh, you know they got one of the best defensive ends in the country. So you know, they got a scheme that's causing some issues. If you actually watch that first quarter versus Ohio State, uh, they played pretty darn well. And we, we know they're going to be fired up to come here. Uh, for us, it, it, it's an exciting. It's the biggest game of the year. It's the next one. But we're going to continue to find ways to uh, develop ourselves and our identity every week throughout the season. And on that, with the run game being such a concern for three quarters against Navy, how much of that has been something you guys looked at in the tape and say, hey, was it something that Navy did or still something that you know you guys have to continue to work on and develop? Yeah, a combination of both, right? Credit to Navy. They did a fantastic job stopping the run. I mean, they, they played really hard. They ran to the ball. Uh, and credit to Coach Newberry. He's done a great job with that defensive scheme. Uh, but we do have to find ways of running the ball more effectively. And it starts with me, whether it's schematically putting our guys in the right position, uh, figuring out ways that we can attack defenses differently. And then ultimately, right, it's going to start up front with our offensive line. Tight ends got to be better. Receivers on the perimeter, that's one of the things we don't talk about enough is making sure they're maintaining their blocks because uh, sometimes those corners or safeties are coming in. So, yeah, it's uh, it, look, the, the running game, we have to get it established where it is more consistent. Um, but I think we'll be on track this do, week. Do you think you have the right guys, whether it's running back or – offensive line to pull this off do you think it's are, are you saying it's mostly execution schematic do you think personnel yeah we, is an issue at all no I, I we've got the personnel we've got the players uh and, and they know and we got great confidence in our roster and there's no doubt about that and and part of it is executing right we've talked about you know you go back to and i don't want to harp on previous weeks but because we do have such a short uh, window to look at what we've done in the past you know, part of our, our, our problems were lack of execution. Like I said, the first game was one guy making mistakes. So if we're running outside zone to the right and the left guard doesn't block his guys, well, you guys say, man, was it the right tackle? It may have been that left guard or a guy that did something uh, in that situation. Maybe it was the backside tight end. Um, but we've got the personnel. We have to execute a little bit better, and it's our job to also schematically make sure we're putting them in the right spots. Right, and those missed assignments that you, you're, you're talking about, are, are they coming from all over, or is it – wide receivers missing bubble screen blocks or is it the offensive line that has been the majority of them? Everybody. 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 I mean, and I, and I stood in front of our team on, on Sunday and I said, I've got to be better. And whether it's, you know, our play calling responsibilities during the week and the preparation. Um, but I think everybody needs to hold responsibilities when things don't go well. And, and that's what I, I think I, what I love about our players is they'll be the first ones to stand up. Hey, on me, that was my, that play, that was my fault. Next play, hey, I've got to do a better job here. And you know, I always say this, in a win, it's easier to coach the guys a little bit harder. And it's no different, right, to hold the staff a little bit more uh, accountable to the things we say we want to do to our standards. So 
after that win, you know, we weren't in there high fiving and hugging in that team meeting yesterday. It was more okay. What do we got to fix and how do we get it? And I think the great thing is everybody's taking full responsibility of what needs to be done in order to get success. Right? Even in the passing game, oh, we get this hit a lot of different receivers. Great, man. We also missed six passes that we should have had completed, things that we were able to accomplish. Um, so that's what I appreciate about this team is there's extreme ownership anytime that things aren't going exactly like they need to. After Nate, start the season against two, two opposite teams like you did this year, what does that do long term in seeing the ways that your guys can adapt, right? Knowing the adaptability of your players. As the season goes on. Yeah, and I think that's going to be huge, Frank. I mean, you talk about the ebbs and flows of a season. Um, we don't ever look ahead other than, hey, this one week. We know that every opponent's going to be a different deal. And you guys have heard me talking for you. Every week is a brand new season. And so to be able to see those different things, whether it's a, a team that's able to stop the run, uh, a team that's running triple option, a team that's going to spread out and play us and empty us, we have to be diversified enough as a program in order to see those things. But, you know, the biggest thing I think what we saw was not just from an X and O standpoint, but the, the perseverance and the resiliency of our guys that regardless of what happened in week one, it's going to have zero reflection on what happens in week two. Just like right now, our record is zero and zero. We're going to have to find a way to improve and get better. And that's why I appreciate about our guys. And I, I use that term blinders all the time, but it's awesome to see, you know, 18 to 23 year olds with that immense focus on hey, the next task at hand. Right, every team is different. What did this group show you in the way they handled adversity after the tough opening season loss to last week? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things we'll always be able to hang our hat on is the way our guys handle that stuff. Is every week going to be perfect? No. But uh, I think, you know, just like I did talk to the team yesterday, and, and like I mentioned to you guys a week ago, is look, you, you put that game, right, the Mississippi State game in the rearview mirror, you learn from it, and you grow from it, and you got to improve, right? Now you knock off that damn rearview mirror, and you keep moving forward. No different, no win, right? Every, and all of a sudden people are patting us on the back, hey, great job, uh, great, that doesn't mean a damn thing. Put it in the rear of your mirror, learn from it, and let's keep moving forward. And, and that's the way it has to be. And so, uh, no different. We, we, every fourth quarter, I don't care if the score's 70 nothing, and we're up or down 70 nothing. the scoreboard doesn't matter. It's that, that approach, that the next play at a time, next deal. And, and, but it it's continues to show that we're doing this thing the right way within our program, that our players believe that, hey, trust the process, trust the way we're doing things, and, and the buy-in is there. And I told you guys that in, during training camp. Like, this is a unique group in seven years here. These guys, and I'm not saying the te teams previously didn't believe. We've got a lot of awesome teams, but these young men believe the way we're doing things. And so I knew that, yeah, rough first start, absolutely. But, hey, it's on to the next one, and then on to the next one. So it just continues to show their resiliency, which I'm so proud of. The flip side of having two road games to start the year is that you now get you're going to be home for like a month. Yeah, um, which you guys I'm sure like. Yeah, what uh, <laughs> what can that mean for, a, you know, like this is an odd schedule, but it seems like you survived the, the tough part early. Is there a benefit to all that? Is yeah, that like, I, like I said in my post game press conference, I guess I owe Coach Fuente a big thank you for the uh, scheduling. No, um, it, it, it look, playing at home is awesome. It's an honor. Uh, I, our stadium, our fans are fantastic. Um, yeah, it, it, look, do I look and say, wow, it's a four-game home stretch? Absolutely. It kind of gives you a chance to say, Phew, maybe we can get into a little bit of a routine. Maybe we're not boarding a bus, a plane, uh, in order to make a, a travel. But uh, really, it's okay. And I know this sounds like coach speak, but it's one game at a time. But it, 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 there is nice knowing, hey, maybe we are on a little bit of a schedule. Uh, there's some familiarity where we are, where we're staying what our turf looks like, you know, being home amongst our fans. And, and certainly it's been a home field advantage. We're so fortunate uh, to have had some success at home. And uh, But, again, we can't wait this Saturday because we know we're going to have a stadium full of our great fans. The, the drive after Navy scored in the fourth quarter, when you go down the field, you convert a bunch of big third downs. Like, what do you think that meant for this offense with a new coordinator, with Seth in his second year, with all these new weapons? Like, I'm curious that particular drive. It seemed like that was like a a big moment for this unit, even though they had a couple big plays in the game earlier. Yeah, I think what the difference between that drive and some of the other ones, right? You saw an explosive play on some of those other ones, and this one was kind of a sustained drive. Okay, are we able to go capitalize and convert? Right? Maybe it's a run play that was able to break. Uh, for a nine-yard gain, and then all of a sudden it was a, a you know 15-yard dig. So I think when you look at those things, it does it does build confidence. And, and let's be realistic. I think when when you've had things that you see, okay, we can do this, we can do this. It, it does be able to provide. It also goes to show you the command that Seth had out there on the field. I'm not sure if you looked at it. I mean, I I certainly wasn't 
giving him any direction other than talking to him about clock management and some of that stuff. But he has a f great understanding of, hey, where do we need to be and all that stuff. And he'll be the first to say, hey, maybe the delay of game was on him and all that. But that drive, I think, just was something we can build upon. And, it, and, I, and I think it gave our guys a sense of, okay, there's multiple ways um, with a lot of new faces that we can attack defenses. And I think that drive was able to pinpoint that. Ryan, right. after um, the, before the Mississippi State game, you were saying the, the win last year didn't matter, it meant nothing for, for this year. Uh, that said, your, your defense giving up 50 points to Arkansas State last year, is that something that you're using as a motivator for them? Yeah, n n no, not at all. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll go back and watch Arkansas State game, and we'll watch it for personnel. Uh, it's the same D coordinator, but we're all, you know, for our offense. But then for uh, you know our defense, we got new staff, um, so we'll be running a different scheme. And, and our guys, I, I think that one thing is you'll never find us you know, look uh, saying, hey, this opponent. Uh, no, we know that it's the most important game of the season, like I mentioned earlier. So uh, our defense knows the, the task at hand. Like I said, anytime you have a quarterback that's played 32 games uh, and they haven't turned the ball over, uh, it, they're going to bring everything they have. And so, and the, you know, the, it's kind of regional rivalry, which I'm excited about. Um, but no, there's, you know, we don't harp on the past with that game. Uh, and, I, and our players that are part of it understand that. And I'm sure that, you know, some of those guys that can play in that game, it's sticking somewhere in the back of their mind, I'm sure. Would you say Arkansas State's scheme offensively, it, will this be like the third scheme that you're in, you know, a third totally different scheme you're playing? Yes, I, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, as uh, the bags are underneath my eyes from you know the film study, I think it's uh, it is a different scheme than what we've seen, and uh, they they do some good things. I mean, uh, say what you want, Grambling's a good FCS program, and they were able to light up the scoreboard versus Grambling to Clayton Steele. They were able to put up some good points last year. And I think they have some. Uh, they've got some good weapons. They've got a, you know uh, they've done a nice job running the football, but they're pretty darn multiple. And so it's not, you're exactly right. So this is the third different defense scheme, uh, like all of our coaches, but our defensive staff is hard at work saying, okay, now how do we prepare for this? And, you know, but I think the resolve of our players will be, okay, Tuesday's practice, right? Here's what we're seeing and how do we continue to approach it? Right. It when appears you have a, a kicking game you can rely on. How much more comfortable is it when you get in the red zone, play calling wise, knowing that, that you have a kicker who, who, who you're confident in, in, in throwing out there? Yeah, I hope I can keep the smile on my face as you asked that question, which is, is nice. Uh, look, credit to, it, you know, it starts with the entire operation in the unit, right? I, I never give, I've gotten, I think like six years ago, someone said something, you don't give the snapper any love. So the, the snapping, the hold, and the kick, all part of the operation. But uh, it is nice. Chris Howard's done a great job, obviously, thus far. We hope we continue. But I think it does allow for certain play calling opportunities. You know, there's a part of that Navy game, given the score, you're saying, okay, do you go up uh, 13? Or do you go for it on a, a fourth and five in order to try to, or fourth and six, I believe it was, in order if you didn't get it, in order to try to, okay, then make it a two touchdown game. And at that point in my mind, I said, well, I, I've got faith in our kicker. Let's go and kick the, make it a 13 point game. So I think that does provide a sense for Coach Crams as a play caller for me as a head coach that we've got faith in what they're able to do. When you prepare for Butch Jones, how many schools do you go back? Uh, I, I don't want to give away our tells, but I'm one of those that uh, uh, the nerd of the, the film. So I've gone starting to study some stuff back. Uh, it's not in black and white yet, but we're, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had to pull out the old uh, analog tape, which some of these guys are too young to remember when I first got into coaching, you know, taping up the stuff on the uh, deal right before VHS. But uh, <laughs> we, we go back because he's had success. And you look at, I mean, uh, you know, from Cincinnati, they did some good things at Tennessee. Um, and then, you know, he's taken quite a bit of that stuff from Alabama that he had under Coach Saban and has implemented what he does offensively. And then their defensive scheme, right, their defense coordinator is a, a Pat Narduzzi disciple. Um, so you go back and say, okay, what has Pitt done on defense? you got to study that because there's always going to be some wrinkles. Um, and I, I think just like anything, it's third third game of the season. There's going to be something we haven't seen. And uh, just hopefully we're prepared ready for it. Your uh, post-game interview on the field, I think, really resonated with a lot of people here after the week that the city has had. Obviously, every week and win is important, but a little more so last week, just given everything that happened in Memphis. Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, it's uh, it, it, every win's a good win. Every win and a, a conference uh, opponent is uh, a good one. We know how hard it is to play up there. But I do think given the magnitude of the week and, and the um, the events that occurred leading up to that, it certainly it was – 
a sense of, okay, this was a prideful you know, deal. And you talk about our city and it, it all starts, right? We're a city that responds well to adversity. Um, you know, one of the best things about the city is the grit. And then, you know, the soul of the city is its people. And, and so, like I said before, it, one of the nice things is we understand as a university and Memphis Tigers and our athletic program, our football team, that we have a responsibility to continue to give back to this community. And so that, to me, as anything, it was like the win was for the city, for the people. And uh, it meant a lot. And obviously it was heartfelt by me and hopefully by many of the community. But uh, the great thing is our players understood the magnitude of that, what it is, and uh, you know, continue to do things the right way. And it, it just, I think it was good. Uh, you know, like I told you guys, I haven't been reading any of the papers, sorry. Uh, but to have messages saying, hey, thanks for that. And, and our players understand that message as well. You said you talked to them before the game, just kind of after everything happened. Did you feel like that was like everything that happened was weighing on them at all? Uh, I think reality, sure, absolutely. I think it's hard not to. Uh, all of us that live in the 901, uh, you know, whether you're born and raised here and you've been here uh, for 20 years, or you're like me that's you know been here for seven and, and takes a lot of pride and, and love for this community. I think. Yeah, our players, right? Whether it's a, a kid that's been here for six months, they, they understand what it was and what it meant to do. And I'm sure at some point they felt a little bit of it. Um, we tell them to be focused, but we also don't want to be um, living in caves and not have an idea what's going on. So I think that win was kind of for everybody. Whew, okay, that was great. That was for our city, uh, not just for our team, but uh, it, it felt good. When you were out of the tunnel Saturday, Ryan, at the Simmons, Simmons Bank Stadium, right? We run out of the tunnel for the first time. What are going to be any emotions from you when you run out for the first time looking around and see all those people with the Tiger Blue on? It always is. Simmons Bank, Liberty Stadium. Uh, I can't wait. I mean, it's – Look, it's, you just talked about the love for the city. That, that place has been special uh, to us and to me and uh, to our team. So, yeah, it'll be uh, a great feeling to be out there in front of our fans. You know, I always think some of the best memories, everybody says, well, how about this specific game? How about this specific play? I think when it's all said and done, uh, you kind of always remember the, the fans in the stands, right? Uh, and I always go back, like the, the college game day game. Everybody said, what was your favorite game? Was it the Cotton Bowl, your first game? Was it the bowl win? Was it win versus UCF? Yeah, those are all neat and great, but like I still remember, you know, running out there uh, the SMU game in a sellout crowd, and seeing all that blue, and that's something that you know when I run out this Saturday, and, and we're gonna have a, a, our team runs out when we have a, a stadium full of our fans, it's gonna be special, and uh, uh, just like everything, we'll be ready to roll and uh, excited to go out there and perform on a high level for our fans. Ryan, well, you talk about wanting a more explosive offense, well, um, scoring the most points in, in an after program history. I know it's only one game, but it's got to feel like. Putting up that amount, that amount of points, you feel like you guys are on the right track going towards what you were talking about in the spring? I, I do think so, right? I think we were able to show the ability to be explosive. And it's just, you know, like I said, one game can't define, okay, hey, but I do think we are on the right track, absolutely. And But you look back and say, well, in the first half, you didn't do a whole lot, you know? And we had some plays that, uh, that, that were explosive, If you, however you track that, whether it's a 12-yard run or a, you know, 15-plus yard pass. Um, but I do think what it did, and going back to Mark's question, it did provide a little bit of confidence in saying, okay, we're able to do these things, and now how do we stack it and continue to find it week after week after week and the ability to, okay, hey, if, if going gets tough, can we hit an explosive or are there things we're able to do? Can we break tackles uh, and continue to move drives along? So uh, when it's all said and done, right, it's a building block for us as an offense. Is that Quindell pick one of the best defensive plays you've seen in your time here? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, Quindell, <laughs> I don't, sorry, that's not very professional just to say it's awesome, but it was. I mean, I was, well, I saw Megas a holy smokes. Uh, just, and look, the, the, the love Quindell you know, for his team, the leader, and, and, and perfect time. The fact that it occurred really right on the, just inside the, you know, the end zone, in one hand grab, and I was like, he came down with it, and, uh, you know, just proud for him. But, man, it was a, one of the best plays, yes, since I've been here. What does it mean having him just get on to start these last two years? He's had three teas, been a part of three takeaways. Obviously, him coming back was big, but just how big is it for him setting the tone, being that guy, helping establish and get some takeaways? Yeah, I mean, it's been fantastic. We, you know, I, I think, Evan, post game, you talked about, the, you know, the ability to get takeaways, right, in the post game conference about um, is that something we've been harping on? But when you have a guy like that, that's not only a, a, a caliber football player, but the leader, like I've told you guys, of our team, that goes out there and sets the tone and gets the takeaways. 
it's sitting there and saying, man, the whole defense is, can rally around that guy. And you guys have all been around Quindell and know what a great personality he is. But, yeah, he, he goes out there week in and week out with the ability to go out there and make a difference in the game and change the game. And uh, we're going to keep relying on him to do that uh, week in and week out.